listen to this that having an enlarged thyroid does not mean you are, you are hyperthyroid uh, no you are not hyperthyroid okay most of you think just because you have a swollen gland you are producing excess hormones no you can have a, a very broad gland because of excessive production of TSH or inflammation which is actually underperforming Okay, so you need iodine to actually help that thyroid gland to actually perform. So imagine having an enlarged thyroid. That tells you your diet is less in iodine. So the thyroid gland is actually enlarging to actually trap iodine from the diets. Because its role here is to actually trap iodine from the diets. And then synthesize the thyroid hormones. So when it's enlarging, it means your diet is actually less in iodine. Okay, yeah. So we have both enlarged thyroid in hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. The reason why I never tell people in my six carbohydrate sources, uh, the sweet potatoes, the green bananas, the butternuts, the arrowroots, the pumpkins, and the beans, most people will ask me, Doc, how about cassava? And I will tell you this, cassava comes with cyanide. And you know very well that there are species of cassava that have high cyanide levels. Point is, yes, it's okay as a complex carbohydrate, but it's supposed to be consumed at least once in two weeks or once in a month. So, it comes with cyanide, and cyanide binds on iodine and prevents you from absorbing iodine in the thyroid. So now anything that you're eating in diets is bound to this cyanide is leaving the body. When it's leaving the body, please, what about plantains? Just drop plantains. Eat green bananas, okay? So when you're actually eating diets that are rich in iodine, but you're eating them with cassava, let's say you've taken ugali that is made up of uh, cassava flour, and then you eat with omena or fish, you've actually wasted the iodine in that seafood. Because the cassava cyanide will bind to the iodine and that will leave the body. And cyanide is also very toxic in the system. So you need to understand that before you take that cassava, if you're taking it once a month, you're safe. That's the reason why I, don't, I never count it as part of my complex carbohydrates. So be very keen with that one, okay? A well-functioning thyroid is very important in fertility. It's very important in metabolism and weight loss. So therefore, most people who are actually suffering uh, obesity and infertility are actually having low iodine levels and therefore they are having low metabolism because of low thyroid hormones. And this is the reason why I tell you to add salt in your drinking water. One of the reasons is to actually make sure, the major reason is actually to make sure that this salt is absorbed by the body into the cells and then water follows, salts into the, uh, follows, follows the salt into the cells and now that is adequate rehydration. So you will not keep on urinating. But most importantly, salt is going to actually provide you with iodine which will be absorbed in the thyroid, help you form thyroid hormones and activate metabolism so you break down the fat. Because it actually activates lipolysis, breakdown of lipids, the fats, you lose weight. And then iodine is going to actually make the thyroid hormones that are actually involved in the gonads. So your fertility is coming back. So do not ignore iodine, okay? Eat that seafood. Do not say, oh, you know, I don't, I was not born eating omena. Go and eat omena. It's, there's always a first time. Go and eat the oysters. Go and eat the puezas at Mombasa. Drink that soup because it's rich in iodine. And then take salt, sea salt is very good. Table salt with iodine is very good. So enjoy them. Good, so those are the sources of iodine. The next one has to be, of course, chromium. Now let me tell you something about chromium. Chromium is needed in very small quantities. But this chromium is a, something that actually has, is, a, is an element that has a very interesting name. Chromium, very interesting name. It's actually called a glucose tolerant factor. What does that mean to you? Glucose tolerant factor. What does that mean to you? It means it is one of the things that will actually help you tolerate glucose. So if you have high blood glucose, it will help you supply this glucose into the muscles. And how does it, how does it do that? It actually activates. It activates the function of insulin. So it actually makes you insulin sensitive. If you are insulin resistant, chromium can actually make you insulin sensitive so chromium supplements can be good for somebody who is suffering from diabetes and they have not fixed their kitchen oh they are so good because they increase the sensitivity of insulin the problem is if you are diabetic already your stores are full right that's why everything is remaining in blood so if you're increasing sensitivity of insulin to the cells and you're not working out you're not doing an activity you're not burning this glucose to provide uh, energy you're going to be obese 
you're going to be very fat because imagine you're taking drugs for diabetes that are actually pumping glucose from blood into the cells and then you're taking a supplement that is actually activating this process again so you're constantly forcing glucose into the ready filled cells they start to rupture and now you start losing your eyes your kidneys your nerves your brain and all that so be very careful as you're taking this to be insulin sensitive also make sure you're fasting to actually empty the stores because the stores are the ones that are supposed to be emptied for you to recover from diabetes okay the fat cells so this one can actually improve your passing glucose from blood into the muscle cells into the liver cells and into the fat cells so it's a good one but it's a dangerous one if you're not doing the right thing okay so that's why it's called the glucose tolerance factor so when you have deficiency in, in chromium and it's needed in very small amounts but a deficiency in this one oh look at it this way you'll have insulin resistance that is diabetes hypertension kidney failure and all that but again if you have the insulin resistance already and you take chromium supplements you're going to go into a more worse condition because you're going to just activate the pumping of glucose into these cells number two you're going to have low glucose tolerance which means you will not tolerate glucose glucose will destroy you <laughs> Number three, you will increase peripheral neuropathy. Now, this tells you you will increase nerve problem. Peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral means away from the central nervous system. So, away from the brain and the spinal cord, that is periphery. So, peripheral neuro. Neuro means nerves. Pathy means destruction. So, peripheral neuropathy. You see how they combine these names to just make you a fool? They are just trying to make a fool out of you. Peripheral neuropathy. <laughs> outside the cns nerves destruction <laughs> hey. Hey. i'm telling you sometimes you sit in that class hey, you know those backbenchers you're sitting there and you're just getting the rumors somebody's saying peripheral neuropathy neuro hey 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 before you even grasp the neuropathy somebody's slapping you with the nephropathy you're like hey. <laughs> so some of these classes were just intimidating for no good reason they just tell you destruction of nerves outside the central nervous system because of course nerves come from the central nervous system outside so as they go outside that's the periphery they are supplying the periphery okay so you will have high peripheral neuropathy because chromium is making you sensitive to insulin so if you have deficiency you're becoming insulin resistance therefore you destroy your nerves you destroy your brain therefore iq goes down memory loss is coming in uh now problem is coming in and guess what each one of these will have a drug for you we will have memorex for your memory we'll have neurobound forte for your nerves We'll have what else? We will have uh, uh, what? For what? What other drug do you know that uh, is brought by low cholesterol levels? Low cholesterol levels, not high. Low cholesterol levels. What other drug do you know? Because when you lose memory, we'll give you a drug for that. We'll give you a supplement for brain development. We'll give you a supplement for uh, uh, for losing weight. Actually, we'll give you Ozempic for losing weight. Aye, like any system. Yani, our system is so designed to give you one drug that gives you seven side effects, and then those seven side effects have a drug. And then you wonder why somebody who is diabetic has all this. What are the foods rich in chromium? I'm going to that. Number one is beef, red meat. Oh, avoid red meat and you get into diabetes. I'm telling you the truth. So, yes, beef, red meat is perfect. Make it fatty. Number two, brewer's yeast. I don't know how you'll get that. <laughs> huh? I don't know how you'll get that. Poultry skin. Eh? <laughs> and guess what? Those people who, are, who have been diagnosed with diabetes are the ones who are told, please remove the skin. Strip off the chicken because the skin will give you cholesterol that will clog your arteries. And now it's the one that has chromium. So they're actually telling you, we are going to maintain you on diabetes so that we, you come back for diabetes drugs. So from now henceforth, if you eat your organic chicken, your free range chicken, kienyeji, do not ever ever strip off the skin. Eat plus the skin. You need that cholesterol. You need that fat. You need this chromium. It's going to help you. And then of course, vegetables, the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, they are very rich in chromium. Cruciferous vegetables, including okra, that you ladies are constantly abusing. Those are foods that are rich in chromium. Enjoy them. And of course, we have a superfood that is called the liver. Do not ever leave that out. At least do the liver once a week. Yes, thank you so much for Libra for asking that. The liver is very is a superfood. So never ever leave out the liver. Don't be lied to that the liver will store toxins. And these toxins will be harmful to you. They are lying to you because they want you sick. 
eat the liver. Go against the system, okay? Amazing. How about kidneys? Yes, all organ meats. But you see, kidneys are not superfoods. Liver is the superfood. Okay? Yeah. So you can enjoy kidneys as organ meats, but the liver is a superfood.